Hi, I'm Abigail C. I'm Ashwin. And today we're going to tell you about our Alexa Prize chatbot. And um, the talk is called Neural Generation Meets Real People Towards Emotionally Engaging Mixed Initiative Conversations. This is joint work with lots of other wonderful people on the Stanford Alexa Prize team. So first to give you some context on the competition, the Alexa Prize is a competition to advance conversational AI. And this year there were 10 university teams who built chatbots for about nine months. US Alexa users can say let's chat and then they get routed to a random chatbot who they talk to in English for a while. And then at the end of the conversation, the user gives a rating from one to five. At the end of the development period, our bot had an average customer rating of 3.6 out of five. And then in the finals, we won second place based on several conversations which were rated by expert judges. So one note is that in this presentation, none of the conversation examples that you see are from real user conversations to protect their privacy. Our chatbot is called Chirpy Cardinal. So Cardinal is a reference both to Cardinal Red, which is the Stanford color, and the Cardinal Bird. So the idea is we want to have a chirpy, upbeat, positive personality. So our motivation in designing Chirpy Cardinal is we noticed that there were four common problems with many existing social bots. The first problem is that they have too little user initiative. So that means that the user is mostly stuck being passive, a kind of passenger choosing options in the bot's quite rigid dialogue trees. This means that the user can't really choose what they want to talk about. The second problem is that a lot of social bots can only chat about a narrow range of topics. So the bot has these dialogue trees which are pre-prepared for a small range of popular topics, but this means that it can't really talk about users' own interests, which might be quite diverse and quite unusual. Thirdly, a lot of social bots can provide information, but they can't provide it conversationally. So for example, you might provide an interesting fact such as, on average, every adult human body contains two to six pounds of bacteria. But a more conversational human-like way to say that would be, did you know that your body contains two to six pounds of bacteria? It's kind of disturbing, huh? Lastly, we found that a lot of social bots don't show enough interest or empathy for the user's own personal experiences and emotions. So if the bot is mostly spending their time talking about external topics, that could be informational, but it feels kind of impersonal. So we find that these can be problems that mean users feel less engaged in the chatbot. So our user-centered design goals for Chirpy Cardinal are that we want to allow the user to drive the conversation. The user needs to be able to choose their own topics and the bot needs to be able to flexibly switch topics according to what the user is interested in. Secondly, we want our bot to be able to chat about any topic. So whatever the user's unusual interests are, we want to be able to chat knowledgeably about it. Thirdly, we want to be able to provide information conversationally. So when we're telling the user some information, we want to use naturalistic phrasing and then be able to discuss further with them using questions and opinions. Lastly, we want to engage empathetically with users' everyday experiences and emotions. So we want to show interest in how the user is feeling and what they're experiencing and ask them questions and share our own similar experiences. So we find that these are design goals that overall lead to more engaged users. So next I'm going to give you an overview of how our system works. On the right, we have an overview diagram. There's a lot going on here. So I'm gonna go through each part individually. So overall, our bot is built on top of the Cobot framework, which is supplied by the Amazon team and it's deployed on AWS. So each turn starts with the user's utterance. They speak their utterance and then it's transcribed by the Alexa ASR system. The transcription which we get has no case or punctuation. So for example, the user might say, um, yeah, I have a cat, her name is Misty, but it comes out without any full stops, you know, no segmentation and no capital letters either. Next, we have the NLP pipeline. So this is a sequence of modules that annotate the user's utterance. So we use Stanford Core NLP and this provides several standard NLP uh, services such as part of speech tagging, parsing, et cetera. Next, we have an entity linker, and this identifies entities which the user is mentioning, and it links it to the corresponding Wikipedia articles. So for example, if the user says, I live in Boulder with my parents, then we figure out that Boulder probably means Boulder, Colorado. We also have a dialogue act classifier. So this figures out what is the dialogue act of the user's utterance. So for example, if the user says, I think it's kind of overrated, then that's an opinion. 
if the user asks, do you have any family, then that's an open question in the personal category about the bot. Next, after the NLP pipeline, we have the dialogue manager. The dialogue manager is in charge of tracking which topics we're discussing with the user. So at any point in the conversation, we have at most one current entity that is under discussion. On some terms, there might be no current entity, for example, if we're just saying hello or goodbye, or maybe we're talking about some personal topic about the user. But at other times, there can be one entity that we're talking about. And this entity can be any Wikipedia article on all of English language Wikipedia. So this helps us achieve our design goal number two, chat about any topic, because Wikipedia has a lot of articles on a lot of obscure topics, so we're able to talk about a lot of things. In particular, we have a navigational intent classifier. So this uses some regexes to identify if the user is trying to navigate towards or away from some topic. So for example, if the user says, do you know anything about origami, then that's a positive navigational intent where they want to talk about origami. And if they say, could we change the subject, then this is a negative navigational intent saying that they don't want to talk about whatever the current topic is. So here we are trying to allow the user to drive the conversation by paying attention to what they want to talk about and don't want to talk about. Next, we have an entity tracker. So this module determines what is the new current entity after processing the user's utterance. So using uh, the output of the entity linker and the navigational intent classifier, we figure out what is the new entity, the new Wikipedia article that we're talking about. So here, for example, if the bot says, I love pandas, they're so cute, then at that point, the current entity is the panda. But if the user says, but sloths are cuter, then now the current entity becomes the sloth because the user is showing that they're more interested in sloths. Next, we have our response generators. These are modules and each one has different conversational abilities. So on each turn, we run all of the response generators in parallel. Each response generator can pr produce a response or none along with a priority. So here's an example. Suppose the bot just said, what are you up to today? And right now, one of the response generators, the neural chat one is talking. And the user responds, just playing some Animal Crossing. So now we get all of our response generators to generate a response. So in this example, our opinion response generator is able to give an opinion about Animal Crossing, saying that they like it. Uh, the Wikipedia response generator is able to give some interesting facts about Animal Crossing from the Wikipedia article. The neural chat, which is a neural generative model, has a response. It's not as good because it doesn't really understand what Animal Crossing is. It says, I love animals. And then we have our fallback response generator, which always just gives the same scripted fallback response saying, I'm not sure how to respond to that. And then we might have some other response generators that don't give a response because their ability is not relevant in this scenario. So you'll see that each response generator also gives a priority along with its response. So here, the neural chat response generator has used the priority weak continue. So this means that it can continue to talk to the user, but it's a weak response because it doesn't really understand what the entity is. Whereas the opinion and wiki response generators can give a can start priority to indicate that they could take over the conversation at this point because they know something interesting about Animal Crossing. Uh, the fallback response generator has its own priority, which is lowest, meaning it only gets used if we have nothing else. So next we choose one of the responses of the several that we got using the priority ranking module. So this just uses the highest priority response with a tiebreaker if necessary. And then after that, the entity tracker updates the current entity if that's necessary. So here we, here we might have chosen the opinion response and now the new current entity is Animal Crossing. So overall, this priority system allows a response generator to detect when its ability is applicable to the user's utterance and then interject to respond. Like in this example, the opinion response generator took over control to give the interesting uh, opinion about Animal Crossing. So this allows us to achieve our design goal number one of being able to flexibly switch topics following the user's initiative. The user wants to talk about Animal Crossing, so we've followed them in this conversation. Lastly, once we've got our response, we might find that we need a different response generator to add a prompt to take the conversation forward. So as an example, Let's say the user has criticized us because we've messed up. They say, you're not very smart. So we have a response generator that's dedicated to responding to these criticisms. We say, sorry, I'm trying to get better. But we need something else in our bot utterance to kind of take the conversation in a new direction. 
So here we have a different response generator, the one that talks about music, to just start a new conversation on a new topic, saying, do you play any musical instruments? So after all of this, we have our complete bot utterance, which might just be a response or it might be a response with a prompt added. So lastly, our entire bot response is spoken to the user using the Alexa's text-to-speech software. And from the time when the user finishes talking to we, giving, uh, we are giving our bot response, uh, that medium time is just about half a second. And over 90% of responses are two seconds or slower. And we find that if we respond in uh, slower than two seconds, then this feels pretty noticeably awkward to the user. So latency is pretty important. So now I'm going to tell you a bit more about the NLP pipeline in some more detail. I mentioned earlier the Dialog Act classifier. So here we use a model that's trained on the MyDAS Dialog Act dataset, which was collected by another Alexa Price team. Surprisingly, we found that it didn't actually work very well out of the box. So we're finding that even for really similar domains, two different Alexa Price bots, domain shift is quite a big problem. But we did find that if we add our own hand labeled training data, then this improved the performance quite a lot. I also mentioned an entity linker. So here's how it works. First, we collect anchor text statistics for all Wikipedia entities. So this is, uh, we look at each Wikipedia article and see what kind of texts are used in the hyperlinks to that article on Wikipedia. So for example, the entity Barack Obama has anchor texts like Barack Obama, Obama, President Obama, etc. So let's suppose we have a user utterance where the user just says, I shopped at Banana Republic today. What we do is we look through that utterance and find potential entity links by matching to anchor texts on Wikipedia. So here we're noticing that Madonna Republic might be the clothing store or it might be the political science concept. And there's of course the fruit banana, etc. So how do we score these different potential entities and figure out which ones are more likely to be real links? So we have um, a score for each user utterance span to the potential entity. And this formula is saying that uh, if the entity is popular on Wikipedia, it has lots of page views, people are reading it a lot, then that's more likely. And then also, if the span is likely to be a text that refers to that entity, then it's more likely to be a link. So in our example, this means that we'd probably find that Banana Republic is more likely to be the clothing store than the political science concept, probably because more people are reading the Wikipedia article about the clothing store. We have another problem, which is that the automatic speech recognition service does sometimes make some errors. So for example, if the transcription says, I watched Ford v Ferrari, then that seems like an error. Users probably talking about the movie Ford v Ferrari. So the problem with our system here is that our scoring function is gonna assign a zero score to this because there are no examples on Wikipedia where anyone wrote the text for v Ferrari and then linked that to the movie. So the way we fix this is we take the user's utterance and then we represent it phonetically. And then we do a kind of fuzzy matching to find what are some anchor texts that have a similar phonetic representation. And then this enables us to potentially match to the correct movie. So next we're gonna tell you a bit more about our response generators. So we have about um, 18 response generators in the bot, uh, but we're only gonna tell you about the few most important ones in this presentation. So I mentioned earlier the neural chat response generator, and this uses a neural generative model to discuss the user's personal experiences and emotions. So here we're trying to achieve our design goal number four, that is showing empathy for the user's feelings and experiences. So we start off by asking a handwritten stars question. So an example of this is we ask, how are you feeling today? And then after this, we chat back and forth with the user and all the subsequent turns from the bot are generated by a GPT-2 media model, which we fine tuned on the empathetic dialogue data set. So here we ask, how's the user feeling? They say kind of bored. This was a more common response uh, due to the pandemic. And you know, we show some empathy and ask why they're bored and they say they're stuck inside and we suggest maybe you could go outside and so on. So we find that there are some uh, problems we encounter with this model. So some of the biggest problems are, we find it difficult to kind of ask questions that make sense. So sometimes the model asks redundant questions. Like if the user says, I'm making soup for lunch, then we might say, what are you having for lunch? And, we've already got that information. Another example is we make unfounded assumptions uh, that the uh, user didn't 
provide that information. So for example, if the user says, I played Frisbee today, and we say, I'm glad to hear you had fun playing Frisbee with your dog, but that's a hallucination. We never, um, the user never said anything about a dog. So we find that to avoid derailing the conversation, uh, we typically keep these conversations pretty short. They're usually only about three utterance pairs, uh, because if it goes on for too long, then the bot's quite likely to say one of these questions that doesn't make sense, and then that derails the conversation. The problem is that this limits the conversational depth. We're unable to talk about anything in a lot of detail if we can only go for about three turns. So I mentioned that we asked the users about how they're feeling. We find that the neural model works a lot better if the users give longer, more contentful utterances. But the problem is that sometimes users just say, I'm fine or okay or something very short. And then that makes it hard for us to find something interesting to say back. So we tried experimenting with preceding our question, how are you feeling today? By first the bot telling the user about its own feelings. So we might try saying, I'm feeling pretty positive today or I'm feeling kind of down lately before asking the user how they're feeling. We also tried getting the bot to share a personal anecdote before asking. So it might say something positive about going for a walk and how it felt good, or it might say something negative about why they're feeling down, missing their friends, finding it hard to focus. And again, this was inspired by the pandemic. So interestingly, we found that users give longer responses when the bot first shares its own emotions. And Strangely, we found if the bot expresses that it's feeling down, then this led to longer user responses than if the bot said they were feeling positive. This might be because if we say we're feeling down, it kind of creates an atmosphere of more real honesty. So the users feel more able to share their own feelings. We also found that if the bot includes the personal anecdote, that also leads to longer user responses. Next, uh, I'll explain the wiki RG. So to support our goal of high coverage world knowledge, um, the WikiRG uses Wikipedia articles as grounding to discuss any entity that interests the user. Our goal is to allow the user to conversationally discover interesting information about any entity. So, for example, uh, in this case, the user uh, WikiRG first <coughs> uh, remembers that the user had mentioned Neo, and then back references Neo from an earlier conversation with a prompt. Uh, then, in the next turn, uh, WikiRG realizes that Neo is a specific kind of entity and gives an open-ended question which is specific to fictional characters. These questions are designed to elicit contentful user responses, which can then be matched to specific sentences in the Wikipedia article using TF-IDF overlap. And in the final turn, um, the response generator gives a conversationally styled response and then switches to talking about Morpheus. Apart from this, as Abby mentioned previously, there are other cases. For instance, we talk about fun facts that we have scraped from uh, Today I Learned subreddit as well. One of our design goals was to provide information conversationally. And this response generator um, is a test bed for our conversational paraphrasing system. This system uh, has many goals. But the few important ones are one, to sort of summarize the knowledge snippet that you want to introduce in the conversation, uh, to stylize it so that the words and the phrasing that is used is much more colloquial than that is in Wikipedia. And then to also maintain conversational flow, referencing what the user had just said and then providing a path forward for the conversation. So given the uh, truncated conversational history uh, and some knowledge context as input, our conversational paraphrasing model outputs a natural sounding paraphrase uh, given the, of the knowledge context. So in this case, there's a long sentence about how Neo and Trinity successfully rescue Morpheus and uh, from heavily armed guards and so on. And so it's nicely paraphrased together um, into how the bot liked something about the movie. And uh, then it continues with some other open-ended questions. The challenges that we faced with this system is that uh, sometimes it had factual inaccuracies while copying over uh, content from the knowledge snippets. On the other hand, sometimes it would do verbatim copying and we kind of want to avoid that because that doesn't have a conversational styling to it. Next, we talk about opinion RG. So a design goal number four was that we want to show interest in the user's feelings and experiences. 
exchanging opinions is a core part of social chit chat it forms a stronger sense of personality and makes our bot seem more relatable so uh, it is important that our bot can also express its opinions the opinion rg's goal is to listen to users opinion on certain topics and then reciprocate with or its own opinions um, on these topics we collect such opinions both positive and negative opinions by querying a twitter stream using a regex which collects tweets of the form i love or hate a certain topic because of a certain reason these the topic and reason can be any text we collected over 900000 tweets out of which we manually whitelisted around 1000 reasons across 100 popular topics we uh, to avoid speaking inappropriately about sensitive topics we only whitelist uncontroversial en entities such as animals foods everyday experiences such as working from home being sick etc we also ensured that all the reasons including negative ones are inoffensive and good spirited so for example here we see that the user says i love cats and then our bot first understands user sentiment and then chooses to disagree with the user and going on to ask their reason uh, for why they like cats and then in the next turn interestingly uh, opinion our response generator emulates a change of mind saying um, a reason why they might also like cats so this kind of leads us to uh, the next part of it which is whether to agree or to disagree with the user Disagree, uh, disagreement is an unavoidable part of human human conversations and we hypothesize that occasional disagreement is necessary in order for our bot to have a convincing and individual personality. So we test this using three policies. One is always agree where they, we always agree with the user sentiment. Second is listen first disagree where we first listen to the user's reason but then disagree with it. And then finally we have convinced agree where we first disagree with user sentiment, but then change the opinion after listening to the user's reason. So to evaluate this, we ask the user, would you like to continue sharing opinions? And if they say yes, then that's a good sign. So comparing these three policies, we see that always agree has a continuation rate of 0.58. And between the two strategies that disagree, uh, convinced agree still maintains that continuation rate, whereas listen first disagree uh, reduces the continuation rate. So it goes on to say that disagreeing in a right way, in the sense of convinced agree, actually doesn't re reduce engagement, but it, but it brings variety to the table um, and also surprises the user in a nice way. So the final response generator I want to talk about is offensive user. Users sometimes give offensive or critical utterances, and our goal is to redirect the user from making a, more offensive comments towards the bot topics that the bot can discuss. So for example, sometimes the user, uh, some users say, I want to talk about sex and we sort of want to handle this. We tried many strategies um, and they are all listed here. The way we evaluate these strategies is to look at the re-offense rate, which is, is it, how likely is it that the user will have another offensive turn after our intervention? To explain the strategies a bit more, there are four main categories. Um, one is why, which is we ask the user, why did you say that? The next one is avoidance, where we say, I would rather not talk about that. Um, and then we have a counter, where we say something like, this is a very suggestive thing to say. I don't think we should be talking about that. And then finally, we have an empathetic strategy, where we say, if I could talk about it, I would, but I really couldn't. Sorry to disappoint. So. Um, Beyond this, we try two more add-ons to it. So first I'll explain the prompt where uh, we add the text in blue, uh, which is suggesting a new topic to go on to. And then the other strategy is we uh, refer to the user by name. Um, so we say, why did you say that Peter and so on. Now to understand the effects of all of these strategies, um, let's first look at what happens when we uh, uh, take like when we refer to the user by name. So we see that um, for avoidance strategies, name works really well and the reoffense rate reduces drastically. Whereas when we ask why, then it actually increases a bit. We believe that we are actually, we might be motivating the user to defend themselves, which prolongs the offensive conversation and especially when we ask them by name. 
and finally, uh, out of the four major strategies that I've introduced to you first, we found out that avoidance seemed to be the most um, effective in reducing the reoffense rate. And in particular, avoidance with name and prompt uh, was the most effective out of everything. Okay, moving on to some analysis and discussion of our social bot. First, uh, let's have a quick look at user engagement and trends. So on the y-axis, you would no you'll notice that we have rating and on the x-axis, we have various metrics of user engagement. So we observe that as the number of turns increases, um, the rating keeps going up, up until a certain point after which it reduces slightly. We believe that this might be because um, of the limitations in content of our bot. And after a certain while, it probably just gets more repetitive and users don't like it as much. And secondly, we, um, we thought that uh, a longer user utterance length is more indicative of a more satisfied user, but it turns out that the pattern is not that clear and mostly it's flat. Uh, we think that this might be because of our inability to handle uh, long user utterances in a meaningful way. And it reflects more a limitation of our bot than of general, um, ways in which people like talking to bots. Uh, we also do some analysis of initiative using dialogue acts. So if you remember dialogue goal, uh, sorry, design goal one, we want the user to drive the conversation and uh, giving the user more initiative is how we sort of analyze it. So on the X axis, uh, sorry, on the right side, you can see um, regression coefficients of various dialogue acts versus rating. So these are the dialogue acts that we got from our dialogue act classifier. Um, so first of all, we believe that questions indicate high user initiative. And if you look at questions uh, as in this uh, figure, we see that for yes, no questions, uh, it is positively associated with higher ratings, whereas it's not as clear for open question personal and open question factual, which typically have longer answers. We think that this might be because of uh, our inability to handle these open questions appropriately. And in the future, perhaps doing it better would, be a, uh, would improve uh, user initiative quite a bit. Secondly, we look at statements and opinions, which we think are medium user initiative. This is because sometimes uh, users can volunteer new pieces of information, which is indicative of how much initiative they are trying to take. We see that uh, um, both of these dialogue acts have a positive correlation with rating. And finally, we look at answers. Um, so we believe that answers are typically to questions which the bot asked and they indicate lower user initiative. So we see that positive and negative answers are correlated positively and negatively respectively with the rating. And we believe that that's just because um, positive answers are more reflective of the times we understood the user right and suggested the right topic, whereas negative answers is quite the opposite. Finally, other answers are also slightly lower in correlation with the rating. And then we look at broad topical coverage. So if you remember our design goal two, we want to talk about uh, any topic, chat about any topic. And so in this diagram, uh, we see on the X axis, different uh, ranges of page views for different entities, which are essentially Wikipedia articles. And we take it as a proxy for different popularity levels. And on the Y axis, you see the percentage of conversations, which include entities from one of these bins. So what we see is that the percentage of conversations in which users initiated the discussion of entities uh, with lower page views is quite significant. In particular, 33% of conversations had at least one entity with less than 8,000 page views. Moreover, conversations with rare entities were rated better, an average of 3.88 compared to those without. And uh, in general, we saw that we had seven and a half distinct entities on average per conversation. Finally, um, as to, uh, to round up the analysis, uh, we look at RG performance and 
first two, uh, the first thing we notice is that good RGs are better than bad RGs. So, yay. Uh, but then, interestingly, we also see that scripted RGs are still performing slightly better than open-ended RGs, despite our attempts to improve open-ended RGs um, in quality. And finally, we see that neural fallback, which is a replacement for fallback, uh, improves the um, rating uh, of the conversations in general. All right, so for discussion and future work, uh, first up is full stack NLP. So most NLP research focuses on self-contained tasks. However, an open domain social bot is by no means a self-contained task. Our social bot is a tapestry of many such components requiring a deep understanding of each component and how they should work together, a setting we call full stack NLP. Often the inputs and outputs to these components are interdependent, which leads to cascading errors. While we have made many design choices which delay hard decisions in the pipeline, the next avenues for advancing state of the art would be to research, uh, do, to do research on models which perform these tasks jointly and methods which enable training over multiple interdependent tasks with only a small amount of joint supervision. Next is the issue of domain shift. As a recurring problem, we found that many existing NLP resources didn't well, work well out of the box. The main reason for this is that the training data for these resources is misaligned with our setting. However, a deeper reason is that the constantly changing nature of dialogue agents also affects it. Even for an extremely related resource, domain shift was a problem and recent advances in online learning and meta learning could provide uh, useful long-term solutions for this problem. Next is uh, the issue of conflicting topics and user intimacy. So bot human conversations are fundamentally different to human human conversations. Users can be adversarial and deliberately test the bot's boundaries. As, as social bot designers, we would like to avoid controversies. So we apply strict but overly simplistic methods to block off sensitive topics. However, this rules out sincere conversation about difficult topics. We observe that users are actually quite resilient to conflict and can find disagreement stimulating. We also found out that emotional intimacy is reciprocal. Users are more inclined to share their feelings after the bot has shared its own. So going forward, we should continue to take seriously the dangers of speaking inappropriately, but also keep in mind the cost to engagement and to intimacy of not engaging in difficult topics. And finally, as part of our goal to support user initiative, we focused on asking the users to find out which topics interested them. However, this puts pressure on the user to think of a response, especially given the time constraints of Alexa devices. Thus, we found that our attempts to let the user take more initiative unfortunately led to decision fatigue. Separately, our ability to support user initiative was limited by our ability to answer follow-up questions and to correctly understand long user utterances. On balance, we found that asking the user open-ended questions about interesting topics was a good strategy, easier to handle than spontaneous user questions and less pressuring than asking the users to name topics. We see an opportunity for future work to build systems which listen more to the user's knowledge rather than only providing knowledge. So this concludes our presentation. Um, you, you can go online and check out our technical article Neural generation meets real people um, for more details. Thanks.